In this video, we'll introduce read Solomon codes. As you can tell from the decoration on the title screen here, uh, I get pretty excited about these. I might even add a sound effect if I can figure out how. Yeah, there we go. So read Solomon codes are a family of NKQD codes that first achieve the singleton bound, that is, n is exactly equal to d plus k minus 1. They admit efficient encoding and decoding algorithms, and, because of these things, they are used all over the place in practice. The basic idea behind Reed Solomon codes, which we've seen before, right? Low-degree polynomials don't have too many roots. Thanks, Polly. Yeah, so the basic idea is, as Polly the polynomial parrot says, low-degree polynomials do not have too many roots. In particular, as we'll define on the next slide, the code words of a Reed-Solomon code are going to consist of evaluations of low-degree polynomials. So low-degree polynomials not having too many roots means that these code words don't have too many zeros, aka the distance of the code is good. More precisely, here's a definition of Reed-Solomon codes. Let q be greater than or equal to n be greater than or equal to k. And let's choose n distinct points alpha 1 through alpha n in fq. Then the Reed-Solomon code of dimension k over fq with those evaluation points alpha, alpha 1 through alpha n, is the following. So I'm going to denote it rs sub q of alpha n k. And when alpha is clear from context and q is clear from context, I might just write rs n k. And this is defined as the following set. So it's the set of all vectors of the form f of alpha 1, f of alpha 2, dot dot dot, up to f of alpha n, where f is a polynomial over fq of degree at most k minus 1. So the Reed-Solomon code of dimension k with evaluation points alpha is the set of all such vectors. Just a note, this definition implies a natural encoding map. That is, the map is the one that takes a message, a naught, a one, dot, 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 up to a k minus one, and maps it into the code word f sub a of alpha one, f sub a of alpha 2, dot dot dot, f sub a of alpha n, where f sub a of x is the polynomial that is the sum from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of a i x to the i. There are other natural and reasonable encoding maps for Reed-Solomon codes, but this is the one that we're going to think about for most of this course. Here are some useful properties of Reed-Solomon codes. First, Reed-Solomon codes are linear codes with Vandermonde matrices as generator matrices. More precisely, consider the code with evaluation points alpha and dimension k. Then the generator matrix for this code is this Vandermonde matrix. It has evaluation points also alpha, so it has n rows, and then it has k columns. We've essentially seen why this is the generator matrix in a previous video. If you multiply this matrix by some vector a, you're essentially evaluating the polynomial whose coefficients are a at these points alpha 1 through alpha n. The next nice property of Reed-Solomon codes is that the distance of a Reed-Solomon code with block length n and dimension k is exactly d equals n minus k plus 1. So here's a proof. First, since Reed-Solomon codes are linear, as we just saw, it suffices to show that the minimum weight is not too small. More precisely, that the minimum weight is n minus k plus 1 of any non-zero code word. But that's the same as asking that the maximum number of zeros in any code word is k minus 1, that is n minus this, and that's the same as saying that the number of roots of any degree at most k minus 1 polynomial 
is k minus 1. And this is true. Right. Low-degree polynomials don't have too many roots. Thanks, Polly. Notice that for these if and only if arrows to strictly make sense, we should argue not only that low-degree polynomials don't have too many roots, but also that there is a polynomial of degree at most k minus 1, which has k minus 1 roots. This is also true. If it's not clear immediately, pause the video and figure out why. A corollary of this proposition is that Reed-Solomon codes exactly meet the singleton bound. Remember from a previous video that the singleton bound said that the distance d was always at most n minus k plus 1 for any code. And now we see that Reed-Solomon codes exactly achieve that. Pretty cool. A code that exactly meets the singleton bound is called a maximum distance separable code. So what we've just seen is that Reed-Solomon codes are maximum distance separable, or MDS. One observation about MDS codes is that a code is MDS if and only if every k by k submatrix of its generator matrix is full rank. That is, if the generator matrix looks like this, and I choose any k rows, say those ones, then the submatrix formed by just those k rows is going to be full rank. Here, this generator matrix is meant to be k by n. To see why this is true, notice that distance n minus k plus 1 means that a code can correct n minus k erasures. And in our picture over here, that looks like this. We have our message x that we multiply by our generator matrix G to get some code word C. And now we have n minus k erasures. Let's say those symbols got erased, leaving us with k remaining linear equations. But being able to recover x from those k linear equations is exactly saying that this submatrix formed by those k rows is full rank. So that's a nice useful property of MDS codes. Notice that Reed-Solomon codes have Vandermond matrices as generators, and we already saw that this property was true for Vandermond matrices, so that checks out. Another observation is that if C is an MDS code with parameters n, k, d, and q, then any k positions of the code word C determine the entire code word. This is just another way of saying that the code can correct n minus k erasures, but sometimes it's nice to think about it in this way instead. Let's try to put MDS codes in the context of the bounds on rate distance trade-offs that we've shown before. So remember that we had this picture. This is a picture of two of the bounds that we've seen before. We've seen the singleton bound and the Plotkin bound. Both of these are impossibility results, and they say that trade-offs on this side of the line are impossible. For any fixed q greater than or equal to 2, as we saw before, the Plotkin bound is strictly better than the singleton bound. That is, it says that the singleton bound is never achievable. But we just said that an MDS code is defined as a code that achieves the singleton bound, and we gave an example of such a code, a Reed-Solomon code. How can this be? The secret is that this picture holds for any fixed Q. But for Reed-Solomon codes, the alphabet size Q is not fixed. It's actually growing with the block length n. This is a downside of Reed-Solomon codes, and in later videos we'll see some ways to try to make the alphabet size smaller. As an aside, note that the Plotkin bound implies that any family of MDS codes must have alphabet size growing with the block length. How fast does it have to grow? This is actually an open question. There's a conjecture called the MDS conjecture, which states that Reed-Solomon codes have basically the optimal alphabet size, but it's still open. <laughs>